as horrible <laughs> as Poseidon and Zeus were, they still thought that was pretty low, sticking a baby and a young mother in a box and throwing her in the ocean it's just to like, die. Whoa, 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 even whoa. they thought that was a little too much. Dude, you went too, too far. much even for me, and I'm Poseidon. Right. I'm the one Christopher who raped Walken. Medusa and made her turn into a gargoyle and ran away. So, but so, this guy, whoa, this guy. So, so you're saying Poseidon's like Christopher Walken? <laughs> that was not Christopher Walken. I, I know, I, I know it wasn't, but I kind of pictured Christopher Walken as Poseidon. That to me is hilarious. That would be awesome if he could voice over an animated Poseidon. Hello and welcome to the Fantastically Terrible Podcast. Episode 17, Medusa, Mythologically Misunderstood. Almost everyone knows of the myth of Medusa. Pretty much. Whether they know the name Medusa. Right. Or that there's some monster snake lady who turns people into stone. If you grew up watching Clash of the Titans... Or if you played God of War, which is a whole Greek that's mythology true, that's base. That's true. In the modern context, we can see why Medusa is so appealing. Mm-hmm. And this idea of a victim and a victim being blamed. But this story is so interesting, both in and of itself. Right. But also, if you look at how Medusa has been portrayed and how her power of the Gorgons, if you go further back in time, was also suppressed with Medusa. She's the monster, but then later was depicted as being a beautiful maiden. Right. Again, that idea of ugly and beautiful. And I think it it goes to a lot of what Joseph Campbell and Robert Graves talked about, that there must have been an early culture that was matriarchal, Mm -hmm. and then the patriarchy came in with the sort of more masculine type gods Mm -hmm. that overrun those cultures. And, and I, then had to demonize them. And I've always found it fascinating that of all the Greek gods, there's certain ones that really stand out. And she's not a Greek god. No. She's one of the creatures. Why is it we're so connected to Medusa? That I think it's that patriarchal thing mm-hmm. with Medusa. Right, right. And you kind of like... Is she a monster who hates men? Right. Or did men curse her to her fate? Right. There's lots of things that you can take from that. Right. Not much has been done to explore Medusa, at least not that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the patriarchy from back then, from ancient Greece, or you're looking at it from today. Well, I I didn't just mean the patriarchy. I just mean the story itself, the characters, the situation. You could take it the way it's written or just make it up. But it's very, there's a lot you can take from there and a lot you can interpret. You can have psychological interpretations. You know, you can sit there like Freud and analyze it. Right. It's very interesting. And the earliest known record we have of the story of Medusa and the Gorgons mm-hmm. can be found in Hesiod's Theogony. And he didn't explain too much, but he'd talk about how Gaia, the earth, gave birth to Pontus the sea, and together they produced Medusa's parents. I think it's Phorcus and Keto who are sea monsters. In turn, they had three daughters that are the Gorgons. Interesting. And of the three daughters, Medusa was mortal and her sisters were not. So this is if you go way back. And as all things in Greek mythology, there's either different origin stories, conflicting origin stories, or you're not sure if this character connects to that character because they have the same name. Gets a little fuzzy sometimes. Right. But it shows that if that's the case, then she's basically the granddaughter of Gaia, Hmm. which predates a lot of the other mythological stories that they put her in. Which often happens. Yeah. Like if you look at Athena, the question was, why was she born out of Zeus's head? Mm -hmm. And it's that she was older than Zeus, but they couldn't get, they couldn't get rid of her. So they had to subjugate her by having her born out of his head. That was Robert Graves who wrote that. Right. It is true that, you know, these are cultures that incorporate existing Mm -hmm. religions into theirs. I think that was a way of showing that he couldn't just be her father. Right. She had to be born from his his mind, his head. Right. To show she's more than just an offspring. Right. Because I think her original cult was so powerful 
Yeah. They well, couldn't just make him the dad. Exactly. Athens, so. Yeah. And I think that might hold true for the myth of the Gorgons in Medusa as well. Mm -hmm. Because if she is a granddaughter of Gaia, that was before the Greek gods. Right. That's if you know Greek mythology. goes back to the Titans. And there's a little bit of speculation that she might be an old Cretan god, goddess too as well. So, Yeah, there's a lot. Well, there's a lot of snake goddesses, mm -hmm. a lot of references. And it's always fertility, life, maybe life and death. Medicine, just like the yeah. modern symbol of medicine, is the intertwined snakes. Which is uh, Genio and Junio, which are the name of the snakes. And something about snakes and knowledge have always gone together in human history. Yeah, it is interesting that we chose that animal. Even, you know, in the Garden of Eden. Right. You have the tree of knowledge and the snake there, even though in the Christian Bible it's a bad uh, animal. In other cultures it's not. After Hesiod, the most important source for Roman mythology is Ovid's Metamorphosis. In his narrative poem, which was composed during the reign of Augustus, he basically tried to explain the mythology right from the beginning until the time of Julius Caesar. Interesting, yes. So that was yeah. Metamorphosis. And he took Greek mythology, mm -hmm. but changed it a little bit for Roman mythology. Yeah, I have read it. And it was Ovid, you know, sometimes people think it's a modern interpretation, but it was Ovid that added that maybe she wasn't just a monster. Oh. Maybe she was a victim. Interesting. And so it is it is interesting because it's not like Ovid was a modern kind of guy. Yeah, especially Rome. Rome was, was like, as strict as Greece was. Rome was pretty Ex strict. Exactly. So in the original account, mm -hmm. it's just basically that. Parents, grandparents, the three Gorgons were born. Right. That's it. Right. All the other details we have is from Ovid. Right. He describes Medusa as having been a beautiful maiden. Mm. And that she was a priestess in the temple of Athena. And all priestesses had to be virgins. If they were not, they were thrown out. And unfortunately, Medusa was apparently very, very beautiful and caught the eye of Poseidon. And being one of the uh -oh. Greek gods. Uh-oh. Unfortunately... <laughs> If one of the Greek uh -oh. gods liked you, and they liked a whole lot of people, he was going to pursue her. And not in the, hey, let's hang out and have a beer. No, no, no. It's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Oh, terrible. It's terrible. So he uh, finally, she didn't, uh, she didn't return his affections, so he ravaged her, raped her in Athena's temple. This outraged Athena. Because not only did this act happen in her shrine, right. but oh, Medusa's not a virgin anymore. So who does she blame? The woman. Medusa. That's terrible. You have a goddess blaming a woman, a woman. that's going after well, to, her brother or to whoever Athena, he is. Yeah, Poseidon's her like her brother, uncle, right, and more powerful than her perhaps. And she can't really do much there. And on the other side, Ovid and the Roman gods, there were certain gods that they favored, and Athena was not one of them. Mm. So it could have been multi-layered. Uh. It could have been this was his version of the story, perhaps mm -hmm. based on texts that we don't have. Or it could just be they wanted to diminish Athena. Well, yeah, because... Athen Which would be ironic. You're increasing one woman to decrease another... What's interesting is that Athens was representative of democracy, and Romans did not like that. No, no, they did so not like that. So that was their, their main god. Athena goddess. was not Roman. She was Greek. Right. Right. They didn't hold her in the same esteem. Right. So anyways, in Ovid's story, Athena's the one that cursed Medusa. Right. Turned her into this hideous monster, turned her beautiful hair into snakes, and made it so anyone, I guess it was revenge for jealousy, anyone that gazed upon her would be turned to stone. So she was cursing her to a life of loneliness. Yeah. And of course, no man could look at her again or anyone. Right. right. On the surface level, it's a great story. And in this story, Medusa was definitely the victim. Oh, yeah. Cursed, I mean, completely unjustly. But on the other side, Ovid often criticized the gods, and he often portrayed their stories in a way that showed that they were unjust. In modern context, in ancient context, unfortunately, this story still holds true. Blame yeah. the victim. Yeah. The power structure blames the victim, protects the criminal, 
you know, it's so unfortunately after Protects centuries. Protects the power structure. Right. It shows yeah. that we can still get a lot from Greek mythology. In Prometheus Bound, it says, Near them, their sisters three, the gorgons winged with snakes for hair, hatred of mortal men. Interesting. I always wondered, I haven't come across this, but if the word gorgon and gorgeous are connected. Ah. I always wondered that. I don't know. That's interesting, though. Artists in the 4th and 5th century started depicting her as a beautiful maiden. Interesting. So the story so prior started to that, yeah. prior to that, she was a horrible monster. And I wonder if even prior to that, she was not a horrible monster. She was a helpful goddess. I right. don't know. She's morphed a lot through history. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, the gentleman who work, was working with David Graver, Dave, mm -hmm. David Winrow, mm -hmm. he wrote a piece, a whole piece talking about how monsters mm -hmm. come about when we start to urbanize. Monsters, you can't find monsters prior to that. So it probably, those snake goddesses and all that was probably a fertility goddess of some sort. Mm -hmm. And then later on, as we became more urbanized, it became more... Uh, there was some transition at some point. Something happened that changed things, that's, that's for sure. Right. Linking that to both the Greeks and before the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, that is, gorgons were used as protective Guess amulets, amulet. sort yeah. of. Their symbol was used to ward off evil. Interesting. And you see this image in ancient Greece on depictions of Zeus. Mm -hmm. Athena had a gorgon on her shield. When you look at that famous mosaic of Alexander the Great, he has a gorgon on his chest. So it's like a portable gargoyle. It just doesn't sit on a church. You walk around with it. So that makes sense with Perseus, though, carrying That's the, the, right. the gargoyle. And they call it an Aegis, A-E-G-I-S. Oh, I've heard that. They all wore these. And I think it's very interesting that both Zeus and Athena had it. Yeah, that, could, that, that proves that it's older than, yeah. you know, Athena creating Medusa, as Ovid had basically laid it out. And how it seems a little contradictory that she was created by Athena, but Athena had her image and so did Zeus. Mm -hmm. And Zeus apparently had the image when he fought the Titans in the Titanomachy. Uh, so let's keep going a little bit back. And there are stories, mm -hmm. which, again, it's Greek mythology. So things contradict and they don't always follow the storylines. <laughs> it's not a narrative on a parallel world mm -hmm. what are the origins of the gorgons because if you look at medusa you will get ovid you will get hesiod but mm -hmm. if you start to research a little bit on gorgons apparently helios mm -hmm. who was the titan god of the sun okay one of the original titan gods right one of helios's children was aix or aegis okay it's spelt in different ways but she was a Gorgon nymph daughter of Helios. Okay. And she was apparently so terrifying, she was a terrifying creature, that even Helios said, we got to hide her in the caves. <laughs> I can't look at this one. That's terrible. <laughs> well, because the original... She's like the original kid under the <laughs> stairs. Did they feed her under the door? Apparently. Okay. Because remember, the Titans had, I guess you could say, human-looking children, monster children. That's right. They populated the sea. They populated everything. Mm -hmm. So all of those ancient Greek monsters that are all from our Titan children, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah, you Cyclopes, the, the uh, yeah, all of those monsters that you read about Odyssey. are all children of the Titans. Right. Anyway, so uh, he had a Gorgon nymph daughter. And her name, depending on the meaning, because Greek has multiple meanings, mm -hmm. it could be terrible goat or fierce storm. So many times she's depicted as a half goat, monster, serpent, sometimes with snakes for hair, just such a mishmash chimera gone wild. In the Iliad, mm -hmm. the Aegis, as we mentioned earlier, which is like this protective... Image yeah, and I've, of a I've, read, I've read that all the time. About it was ages. a device carried by Athena and Zeus, and it could be interpreted as an animal skin or a shield. Interesting, because then Perseus just gets his own ages by going like a little bit more live. Yeah, yeah, a live version <laughs> of, of her. Well, in uh, oh, we'll go back to that in just a little bit uh, okay. to see how they try to tie these older stories with Ovid's newer story. Mm -hmm. That's what Zeus killed in the Titanomachy. 
And that's what he used as the Aegis. Mm -hmm. So the monster, he killed Aix or Aegis in the Titanomachy, and he took that, mm -hmm. the head, right. either as a skin or on his shield. Titanomachy sounds like something. I love that name. I love it, saying it over and over again. It's it, so it, fabulous. It sounds like Army of Darkness, <laughs> the, the Necronomicon or whatever it's called. And so this uh, goat-like animal monster thing mm -hmm. uh, is also where we get the constellation. Capra, Capricorn. Oh, I always wondered about the goat. Yes, it's part of, if you think, it's part of the Gorgon myth, which is tied to Medusa. Hmm. Crazy Greeks. That's right. And there's actually a little uh, genealogy that you can see. I have it also on our website. So in the story of Perseus, which is also really good, but again, very misogynistic. It he's, is. He's a good... There's no around His it. mother is Denae. Mm -hmm. Her father went to an oracle right. to find out, hey, what's going to go on? How fabulous is always my life going to be? Always a bad idea. Always a bad idea. And they always think they're going to get good news. I never, I would avoid the oracles. It was always bad news. Yeah. Nine out of ten times you're going to get killed <laughs> by your son or your grandson. Right. That was the case. So the oracle said your grandson's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't have a grandson. <laughs> she said, you will one day. Now don't let the door hit you on the way out. So Love. he goes back home and takes his poor daughter, who's a young maiden, and locks her up. Right. And even though the oracle said this won't be for another 20 years, he would rather lock his daughter up until she's dead so that he could squeeze out more than 20 years, I suppose. But anyways, going against your fate in Greek mythology is always a bad idea. Oh, yeah. Because cause... no matter what you do, you are making that fate happen. So what yeah. he does was he locks her up. She's in a cage in the open air. And who's zooming by? Bored, I guess, is Zeus. <laughs> I was going to say Zeus. Zeus. Ba bad. He's like the original Peeping Tom. He's quite the character, that Zeus. He's a, he's a legend. So he flies by. He sees this beautiful girl in the cage. He turns into different animals. He can't get into the the cage he can't get through the little opening <laughs> so this was his brilliant idea he turned into golden rain creative i thought the golden rain and of course <sighs> denae has no idea impregnates her eventually has the baby the baby is perseus right. so then her father decides he wants to do what all men do in greek mythology and roman which is Oh, how can I get rid of the baby? Can't kill the baby because then the gods will get mad at me. And mm -hmm. when the gods are mad at you, they'll kill you. So how can I get if rid of this lucky. kid? <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky. That's true. <laughs> so he's trying to think of what to do. He wants to expose the baby, which is what they used to do. Just leave it yeah, in the wilderness. Spartans because were then pretty bad about that. If it dies, <clears throat> it's not really my fault. I didn't really right. kill the baby. I just left it out there. Of course, she had a problem with this and didn't want her child to die. So she was protecting her son. And so the dad put them both, it's a big long story, but stuck them both in, I don't know if it was a coffin or a box or something, nailed them in, threw them in the ocean with a little help from Poseidon for some reason. He helped them make it to shore. And there was an old man there on the shore who helped her get out. Mm -hmm. And so they took refuge on this little island. So you think the Poseidon was just like... Hey, box. Maybe I'll just move this box over there. I really don't know who's I in this box. Actually... I don't know even. No, no, no. What he knew what was going on because they could oh, okay. see. They could see that he was being. Uh, but still, an you're a god and a horrible. Dad. You're a god. You got nothing else better to do, and you're like, hey, box. Yeah, okay. So they, I think they thought as horrible <laughs> as Poseidon and Zeus were. They still thought that was pretty low, sticking a baby and a young mother in a box and throwing her in the ocean it's just to like, die. Whoa, 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 even whoa. they thought that was a little too much. Dude, you went too, too far. much even for me and I'm Poseidon. Right. I'm the one Christopher who raped Walken. Medusa and made her turn into a gargoyle and ran away. So But so, this guy. Whoa, this guy. So so you're saying Poseidon's like Christopher Walken? <laughs> that was not Christopher Walken. I, I know, I, I know it wasn't, but I kind of pictured Christopher Walken as Poseidon. That, to me, is hilarious. That would be awesome if he could voice over an animated Poseidon. But yeah, anyways, okay. we shall not digress too much. Please. They make it onto a small island who is ruled by Polydectes. Poly that sounds like math. <laughs> <laughs> 
I gotta do the polydectes. <laughs> well, he was also uh, a jerk who uh, took a shining to poor Denae and wanted to marry her. She refused. And poor Perseus, who's growing up in this and seeing this guy constantly hit on his mom, and she's refusing him, but they're basically refugees, and what are they going to do? So Perseus ends up in a situation where Polydectes says, if you don't get the head of Medusa... He can't win it. He can't win. He assumes Medusa will kill him. Da-da-da, da-da-da. I get to marry your your mom, and you're not around. All right. You're going to be dead. Exactly. So Perseus is forced to go on this journey to kill this monster Gorgon in order to save his mom from marrying him. So the ironic thing is he's trying to save his mom by killing another woman who he either doesn't care or has no idea is also a victim of the gods. Well, according to Ovid, she's also a victim of of, of the gods. Yeah, but this is also, Perseus is also from Ovid. This whole myth is from Ovid. Right. But off Perseus goes, and he ends up getting help from Athena, because Athena still hates Medusa. (laughs) I don't get how petty are you. You've turned her into a monster. (laughs) You know, you could also take it to you that Perseus, the person living in the system, ends up being the abuser, even though he's the victim, too, of the of circumstance. And it's just such a mess. But in the end, the women can't do anything. His right. mom can't say, no, bug off. I'm not going to marry you. Get the exactly. heck out. Exactly. And Medusa's stuck on this island. Potential heroes constantly trying to kill her and getting turned into stone. Um, so it's And then Perseus ha- is a man, so he has to go and save the mom and kill the monster. So it's all very patriarchal. Yeah. In the middle of all these male-dominated stories, right. he gives her some life, but it might only be to cut down Athena. I'm not sure. Yeah, the Romans did not care for Athens. So uh, Athena helped him, and he also receives wings from... Hermes. He receives Hermes' wings. He receives the helmet to protect him, all of those things. And he manages to sneak in... And of the three sisters, he can kill Medusa because she's the only mortal one. The other two sisters are immortal. So when he does manage to sever her head... Okay, wait a second. Yes. Who thinks of this punishment? I'm going to make the rest of you immortal, <laughs> but I'm going to make you mortal. Right. Like I, I don't know, but if you go back to... Is there to... arbitration going on here? Who <laughs> <laughs> sits there and plans it out? I'm just... Just asking. If you go back to the Helios genealogy, Mm -hmm. they were like that. She was mortal. They were not. Interesting. And I guess Athena made it the punishment that she would eventually die. However you divide this misogynist pie, women in ancient Greece had a sad slice of life. Oh, they got a raw deal. And Medusa got a serious raw deal. Yeah. Strange. I always... Felt bad for her. I think little by little, we should mention different women in Greek mythology who really got a bad deal. Right. And there were many. There's so many. But there are a few that really stand out. And I think Madonna. Uh, Madonna. <laughs> Madonna. <laughs> Pandora is one of them, actually. Yeah. Well, that she would be a great totally, one. She got totally, totally. Io, Pandora, Medusa, Arachne. Mm-hmm. You know, there are times that I've I, I read and I was cheering for Hera. Hera got a raw deal, too. I know, but I always would cheer for her, like, hope that, you know, maybe you win once. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, Zeus would get away with all this stuff, and she never won once. Yes. You know? Yes. And they paint her as the horrible, mean wife, but she, she was also a victim of all of this. Yeah, putting up with her husband. Okay, we'll have to have a series. Absolutely. All right, that sounds Absolutely. good. All right. Yeah, maybe let us know what you think. You can always leave comments. And if you are interested in this topic, we can definitely pursue it. Now it's time for The Fantastically Terrible. Character or creature, this week is Electrian from Greek mythology. According to Homer's Odyssey, Aphrodite was married to Hephaestus, the god of fire, blacksmiths, and metalworking. However, she was often unfaithful to him. This is a bad situation for a young soldier named Electrian. Ares, the god of war, ordered Electrian to stand guard outside his door while he and Aphrodite secretly got busy. Unfortunately, he fell asleep while on guard duty, and the sun god, Helios, discovered the lovers in the morning. 
Helios then ran to tell Hephaestus, who created a net to ensnare and shame them. <laughs> Furious, Ares turned Electrion into a rooster. The irony wasn't lost. As an eternal rooster, he would forever crow to announce the arrival of the rising sun. So, if you were sitting around and you ever wondered, hey, is there a god of chickens and roosters? Indeed there is. And that's his story. Punished to be a rooster for eternity because two gods got caught knocking the boots. That's it for today. Seven Robots Fantastically Terrible. Podcast is by Miguel Guerra and Susie Diaz. Our theme song is by Susie. The best way to support our podcast is to leave a review on iTunes. This helps others to find us and we can see your name and personally thank you live on the show. For more information on this episode, including links to everything we've referenced, please visit our website at www.7robots.com slash podcast. Another way to share the love is to read our free comics on Webtoon. Ghost Metal is a series of 100 original horror and sci-fi stories where we'll put you in the shoes of our unfortunate victims each week. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.